I've been playing the MMO Final Fantasy XIV for a number of years now, and there's a lot of things about how to play the game that I wish I knew when I first started, instead of fumbling around and finding out later. So this video is mainly for people who are considering playing the game soon, or new players, that is, sprouts with a sprout over your head in game to show that you're new, who want some brief advice on what to watch out for and what to do when you're starting. So I'm from Australia, and I play on the Oceanic server. I was on the Japanese server before that, but I moved over when the Oceanic server Materia started and gave us an incentive to move by offering free gil if we made a new character to level 30. So I started playing the game again from the start with a new character and got thinking about what advice I would give past Sprout me if I knew then what I know now about the game. First what you need to know is that the main storyline is the focus of the game. This is a contentious point perhaps, but I think Final Fantasy XIV is more of a traditional single player Final Fantasy game than it is a typical MMO. It's a Final Fantasy game that happens to have some multiplayer elements, but the main story quest is the key feature. There's a lot of cutscenes in this game, like most Final Fantasy games. Some cutscenes are so long that the game will warn you in advance to prepare yourself and your bladder. If you're in a dungeon or a raid with other players and a cutscene appears, don't feel pressured to skip it for the sake of the other more experienced players. Other players will and should wait for you to watch the cutscene, as others should have done for them when they were new too. I've never played the MMO World of Warcraft, which may have a strong story focus like FF14. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if you play well and that's the case. The last MMOs I played were older MMOs, such as Neverwinter Nights, which had a single player game that was entirely separate to the MMO mode. I played the original RuneScape for a while in the past too. I remember a lot of killing things to grind experience points. This was the same when I played my first MMO, Ultima Online, which other than the introduction cutscene to establish a setting, I don't really think it had much of a story in the game. In the multiverse that is Ultima Online. So this was in contrast to the single player Ultima games that I played before that, that were all about the story and the world building and the setting, but MMOs at this time were really, really grindy. Those type of MMOs took their gameplay loop from what I played before them. MUDs, multiplayer online text games where the focus was repeatedly grinding experience points by killing a lot of enemy characters in the world until your level goes up. Don't do this in Final Fantasy XIV, it's not the optimal way to play. There are much more efficient, faster, and fun ways to play and level your character in this game, such as doing the main story quest, which will look like this icon. There's also other ways to level your character, such as side quests that look like this icon, which give you extra details about the game's lore. There's a lot, a lot of lore in this game. The world building is really well done and really extensive. Then you have job quests, which look like this icon. Now your character's class slash job is something that differentiates Final Fantasy XIV from other MMOs. You'll be asked to pick a starting class when starting the game. I picked a conjurer initially, which later becomes a white mage because that's the type of character I wanted to play. I had the idea that a healer role would be easier to play because I could heal myself if I was in danger. That sounds good, right? But it didn't occur to me that as a healer, when playing the game with other players in the multiplayer parts of the game, as a healer, I'm expected to be the team doctor and keep everyone alive, which takes some getting used to. So those of you coming from other MMOs are thinking, so what, you were a healer, you had to heal, so what, that's normal. What I didn't initially know about jobs in Final Fantasy XIV is that you're not locked into the job you initially pick. If you want to play another job, you can, with no penalties. In fact, you can play them all if you wish. Many people do. You just change the weapon you're holding to switch between jobs you know. Each job has its own story, and they're all interesting. Mm, um, except for the paladins. I don't know what was happening there. Actually, you're not really locked into much of anything in this game. Don't even worry if you don't like the race or the sex you pick at first. You can always change that later through Fantasia potions. So back to the quests in the game and the quest icons before moving on. There's also feature quests that have the same icon as job quests. Their quests unlock a lot of interesting side content such as extra dungeons, extra boss fights called trials, extra side stories and extra special content. I left a lot of these until later when I first played the game as I just rushed through the main story. But there's really no rush. Take your time and enjoy the game at the pace you want to. Other than special seasonal events that are run for a limited time in the year such as Christmas, Valentine's Day, Halloween, etc. and special promotional events sometimes with other games, there's really very little fear of missing out in this game. So some other tips for fighting and leveling in this game. I should mention to use your chocobo companion when fighting. 
I ignored this the first time I played the game and it actually made it harder on myself in doing so. Your chocobo will fight and level up alongside you as you fight in the overworld. There's a lot of other ways to level up too, such as doing fates, which you'll see pop up in the overworld, and you can do them by yourself or with other players. And for the first two parts of the game, A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward, you can do battle lead quests from NPCs you'll meet. One side content that I would recommend unlocking and doing in order between expansions is raids. They have their own stories which feed back into the main storyline later on in the game. I didn't initially touch them uh, until I'd finished the Shadowbringers expansion and I'd realised at that point that I'd missed a lot of backstory that would have made me appreciate the main story more. So let's go through them and have a look at when you do them. There are normal raids that are done with a group of eight players and alliance raids that are done with three groups of eight each. The first after a Realm Reborn is the Bahamut quest, which I recommend doing via creating a party for each turn of it in the Party Finder and make it an unrestricted party so that your item level and stats won't be scaled down to what the maximum was when this raid first came out, which was a long time ago now, and say that you're doing it for completion. You'll find other people in the same boat as you or those who want to try it again who will join you. It's worth doing it as an unrestricted party as this particular raid is especially challenging so you're unlikely to find people who want to do it with you to clear it in any other way these days. You may find in a Final Fantasy Discord group other people who want to do it sync down for the challenge but if you just want to do it for completion's sake, for the experience and the story then do it unrestricted. Whatever you do, definitely don't go into the duty finder to try to queue up to do old content like this as you'll likely be waiting and waiting and waiting for someone to join you. It's best to advertise a party in the Party Finder instead for the older raids. The first Alliance raid in A Realm Reborn is the Crystal Tower raids. They're still run frequently, so it's not difficult to queue up for these. Then comes the raids from Heavensward, the first expansion. The normal raid is the Alexander Quest, and the Alliance raid is the Shadow of Mark... Mark... Mark? I, I don't know how that's pronounced. The Shadow of Mark raids. It shouldn't be hard to find people to play these with in peak hours still. For the next expansion, Stormblood, the normal raid is the Omega Quest series, and the Alliance raid is the Return to Ivalice raid series. Depending on what server you're on, these might be difficult to find people to play with these days. It's best to try to queue during peak hours on your server, and if the queue is taking too long, then just advertise a party for it in the Party Finder. Next is the Shadowbringers expansion, with the normal raid being the Eden Quest, and the Alliance raid being the Yorha Dark Apocalypse raid, which is a crossover with the game Near Automata. Again, you'll probably be able to find people to do these with during peak hours, depending on your server. But if you have trouble finding people, then just, again, create a party in the Party Finder to find people. Okay, I won't go into the raids for the next expansion, Endwalker, and beyond that, because this video is currently being made during patch 6.3, and so by the time you finish the main story up to Endwalker, you'll know what you're doing with raids. Another way of leveling your character is to do your dailies every day. I remember when I first started this game, I'd hear people talking about making sure to do their dailies, and I'd think, what's that? Well. You'll find your dailies in the duty finder in the duty reel app with the question mark icon. At first you'll be restricted to just leveling and the PvP mode frontline, but as you level up you'll unlock more. And it's an easy way to make it EXP, to, to get treasure, to play with other people. So I just mentioned PvP then. This game does have a limited PvP mode, which I actually didn't touch until I finished the main story quest at first. But it does give you experience points for your character, so it does help you level up faster, and it gives you a general instruction on how to play your job. You'll find the PvP area at the Wolves Den Pier in Lenoska. Don't worry, people won't attack you there as I initially assumed, thinking that my life was threatened. You'll have to set up your PvP hotbar, which is different from your regular hotbar. Do this there by clicking on Character, PvP Profile, and then select your job actions and organise them. You can practice your PvP actions at the Wolves Den Pier on the, the the training dummies there on the pier. And you can get an idea of how to use your PvP actions, which again is slightly different from your regular your regular actions in the rest of the game. But you'll get the hang of it soon. Speaking of the hotbar, the level of UI customization in this game is excellent. Go to the HUD layout to change your UI and spend some time to get familiar with how to change your HUD, which will help you in the long term. Mine's not perfect now even after all the many years I've been playing and I could improve it still, but it's definitely better than when I first started. You can really customise things to how you want. Okay, some more tips for what I wish I knew when I first started playing. As in other MMOs, there's three main fighting roles. Tanks, the ones who lead the party into battle and attract the attention of whom you're fighting and take the brunt of the damage. Healers, who heal people obviously. And DPS, which stands for damage per second and are the members who are just attacking. 
They may be ranged, such as bards who stand back and shoot arrows while playing instruments to provide magical buffs for the whole party, or they may be melee fighters, up close and personal, such as the Dragoon who gets in close and stabs away and then jumps back. I think the easiest role personally is DPS, you're just attacking as much as possible and trying not to die. Tanks and healers, however, have much more specific responsibilities. Tanks need to draw what's called enmity from the enemy so that they attack the tank and not the others in the team. I think in other MMOs the term is aggro. Now, healers have to keep themselves first alive, that's their main priority, then the team members, and lastly attack the enemy. This isn't a game where healers only heal. Healers are battle medics here. But their priority should always be to keep themselves alive first, because if they can't keep themselves alive, they're not any use. And then they're party alive, and then lastly, they fight. Each job has its own attached storyline up until the Stormblood expansion. After that comes role quests, where you can use any job from a specific role, so tank, DPS, healer, to continue the role quest storyline. For that reason, and you don't have to, you can play through the entire story uh, with just one job and never touch any other jobs, but for that reason I recommend leveling up at least one of each type of job role before you reach the Shadowbringers expansion where the role quest starts. So one tank, one DPS and one healer. Not every job is combat focused. There are three gathering jobs where you can find items called Disciples of the Land. They are Botanist, Miner and Fisher. Then there are crafting jobs called Disciples of the Hand where you can craft items, weapons, armor, potions, furniture, food, etc. They are carpenter, blacksmith, armorer, goldsmith, leather worker, weaver, alchemist, and culinarium. I started off with just culinarium because I wanted to make food that gives benefits to eating before combat. Then I picked up being a botanist to find the ingredients to make the food, and before I knew it, I was playing all the gathering and all the crafting jobs. It can be a bit tedious at first, but you can make macros to automate the process somewhat, and it makes a diversion from the main story and the combat focus of the game. Each gathering and combat job has its own associated story too, or you can just ignore that and just focus on the fighting. Up to you. I recommend clicking on recommended gear to pick the best gear from what you have available. There's little need to sort it yourself manually. You receive new and better gear as you play the game, but you can also buy it from vendors if you want, or you can make it yourself if you have a crafting job. If you're finding fights difficult, you may want to upgrade your gear. You can right click on a piece of gear and select item comparison to compare with the current piece of gear that you're wearing and see which is better. When you're in a dungeon and someone opens a treasure chest, you roll to see which player gets the gear. The options are need, greed and pass. Never press pass unless you already have that piece of gear and the game won't let you roll for it. S still roll for gear even if you don't require it at the moment for your job or for your level because you can always do what's called desynthesis to the gear. To use the de desynthesis, you need to level a non-fighting job such as carpenter, blacksmith, armorer, goldsmith, leather worker, weaver, alchemist or culinarian to level 30 and then do the quest Gone to Pieces in Uldar which unlocks desynthesis. You can then right click on items and pick desynthesis which breaks down the items into their other components which you can then use as ingredients for crafting or you can put them on the market board for another player to buy and for you to make money. Speaking of gear, you should know that this game is basically one big dress-up doll's house thanks to Glam. If you unlock Glamours at level 15 in Vesper Bay in Western Thanalan with the quest If I Had a Glamour, then you don't have to enter battle wearing drab clothes and you can dress however you want. It's often said that Glamour is the true endgame of this game as people desperately try to dress up their characters and find the best gear to look the best. So I said you can put items you don't need up for sale on the market board. Use the market board early on, I recommend this. It's a good way to start making money or gill as the main currency is. You can sell things on the market board by hiring a retainer, which subscribers to the game are giving two to use. You can get more for real money, but I only need the two. A retainer is an NPC who will sell your stuff for you on the market board or do other jobs for you if you pay them with a currency called Ventures, which you'll acquire during the game. You can have them hold items for you, sell items for you, or assign to a venture to find items for you. I recommend using retainers and selling your trash in the market board as soon as possible so you can build up your money supplies. When selling an item, click on Compare Prices to see how much the same item is being currently sold by other players. This will give you an idea of relatively how much you should price your item for. 
There's a lot more I could say about things I wished I'd understood when I first started playing the game, but you'll find out the way I did through trial and error. And if you're still not sure, just ask someone for help or advice. You'll hear a lot of players talking about the end game, which is the game once you finish the main story quest. And what that involves is a personal decision. It it's up to you how you like playing the game. It could be, like I said, glam. It could be dressing up your character and role playing. Or it could be something else. It could be savage content. That is savage fighting where you fight the hardest of the hardest boss monsters. And for that you need to find people specifically to play with who want to do that too. So for that you might want to join a free company or an FC as it's abbreviated to. That is, it's a group of other players who have similar goals in the game. I think in other MMOs this is probably called a guild or a clan, but that's what it is. It's an association of players who are looking to help each other, to do the same thing, to socialise, to play the game together. So if you're looking for an FC, you might want to hang around where the people are, in somewhere like Limsa Lamensa where there's a lot of people, or you might want to ask people you played in a dungeon with, can I join your FC if you're interested in that? And whether you join an FC or not, I recommend looking up the Final Fantasy Discord groups. Discord is really popular among the Final Fantasy XIV community. It's a great way to organise content outside of the game. There's an official Final Fantasy XIV group, but there's also Final Fantasy XIV groups for your server and possibly even for your country and your language. So find one that's appropriate for you and find other players who are interested in what you want to do in the game when you get to that point. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful if you're a new player wanting to get some general tips. I might do some more specific tutorials for Final Fantasy XIV later on, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, then please subscribe. And until then, if you like this video, then please give it a like, and thanks for watching.